And it looks like we are live. So we are going to kick this off. So thank you guys for joining us today for another edition of Pivot Me Live. As you know, we've moved, um, done a little deviation for a bit uh, for the Pivot Me podcast. What we found is that delaying the information and getting it out to you, especially during this time where there is massive change, the information um, ages a little bit. And we want to get this information out as quick as possible to you, which is why we've decided to go live. Um, And every week on Thursday morning at 9 a.m. Pacific time, we are talking to business owners, business leaders that are navigating the this time that we're all in and discussing how they're navigating it, how they're leading their business and their staff and their community through um, this period in our lives uh, and also discuss some opportunities they've identified. So we talk about the challenges. We talk about what they've done to move past those challenges. But we also need to talk about the opportunities that exist because there are many opportunities. There are businesses that are experiencing unprecedented opportunities. Um, And even some of them may feel a little conflicted about that, conflicted about the opportunities that lay ahead of them. So we're going to have some open discussion and have a chat um, and provide some insight as to how you can lead your business through the season as well, Um, which brings us to our guest today. I'm excited to have Denise Bark home with us. Um, I've known Denise for or, well, it's been a few years now. Probably yeah, it's been, been a little, three or four years. About three or four years. Um, she is the president and chief inspiration officer at the Urban Market and Gift Basket Baskets. Thank you so much for joining us today, Denise. Thanks for having me on this beautiful morning. I appreciate being here. Absolutely. So, Denise, tell us, uh, tell us about what you guys do. Tell us what you do and who you do it for. Sure. So, we are downtown Reno's only grocery store. Um, we are a I like to describe it as an experiential grocery market. So we are a hybrid blend of a traditional grocery meets specialty, and we have a very strong influence of local vendors. So we carry over 50 different local vendors products. So um, we are a small business. It's my my husband and I, it's our business. But uh, in soliciting and caring and representing over 50 different local vendors, we're also spreading the love and creating an environment where consumers can come and find all their favorite locals in one location. Mm -hmm. But we're also supporting all those folks. So that's really um, a, a a foundational brick of our concept store. Uh, And we provide a lot of different services. So we have a full service uh, espresso smoothie bar that doubles up as a beer wine bar. Mm -hmm. Um, We carry over 2000 different uh, grocery selections. And um, I mean, it's everything from Bentley Ranch beef to uh, dairy products, all the categories you'd find in a, in a full service grocery market or a grocery store. And we're in the process of adding a deli so that we can add uh, made to order to our, our list of things, as well as catering and delivery. So um, there's a lot going on in a very small little space, but uh it's working. Yeah, it works. I love your store. I love, I love your store. I love the selection and also just the feel that you get. It is an experience when you walk in there. There's definitely, you have an experience when you walk in there. So brick and mortar store. So talk to us about what's changed recently. I imagine you guys have had to make some adjustments with COVID. We have, we've, you know, um, it kind of came of came fast and furiously. And I think the city and the County have responded as quickly as they possibly can. Uh, for ourselves, we're considered an essential business. So um, offering foodstuffs and beverage to the local community, which is really great for downtown because they don't have a lot of options. And a lot of people right now don't want to step into the large store environment. They don't want to expose themselves. Mm-hmm. So by coming to our store, they get that, they still get the broad selection um, without the exposure to large groups of people Um And so that's working really well, but we have had to eliminate any kind of self-serve. So part of our business model is to allow customers to serve themselves. And we've had to eliminate that altogether. So our staff is doing 100%, whether it's pouring a a beverage from the fountain, a coffee, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. So, um, and we've also had to restrict any kind of congregating within on premise. So you can't sit at the tables we have available and you can't sit at the bar. You can't, you just can't congregate inside the space and you can't eat within the space. So those changes alone are not, um, 
Oh, I'm not sure what the word is I want. They're not hurting us by any stretch of the imagination. I mean, people are missing that camaraderie and that ability to congregate, but it's not hurting us. The And the last most important piece is we've just upped our game on sanitation and cleanliness. So it's spotless in our store. <laughs> <laughs> and that's gets me excited because I'm kind of a clean freak and uh, clean really works for me. So we are constantly sanitizing, constantly cleaning. Um, and then the last the last piece is we did adjust our operating hours because we were just finding that since we don't have that early morning rush of people going to work, there's no sense being there as early as we were. And we're not staying open quite as late because by the time eight o'clock rolls around, the sidewalks have rolled up and downtown is quiet. I bet. Because isn't all, I mean, how much of your traffic is um, residents that live there versus people that work in downtown? Right. So I would tell you pre-COVID, uh, our demographic was our, our neighborhood, our community, followed by tourism mm -hmm. and then the workforce. Okay. All right. Now it's our neighborhood, our neighborhood, our neighborhood. So because, you know, with, the, with all the businesses and the casino shut down, there is no tourism traffic. Sure. There are no Conventions, you know, there's nothing to draw people to the downtown at this point. We'll see what happens as as things start to open up. Um, and then the purpose of one of the purposes of the deli outside of just the re constant request from our clientele um, is to reach out to that workforce demographic and deliver. Right. So made to order, do that catering, do that delivery in the downtown core, because a lot of work, people when they're working, it's very aggravating downtown to leave your office, take the elevator to the basement, get in your car, drive to where you want to pick up food, sure. wait to pick up food, drive, you know, you do and, and reverse the cycle. So we feel that that will be a very positive uh, direction for us. But right now it's our neighborhood who's supporting us. It's the, it's the community that lives around us. Wow. So did so if you typically got business from three different demographics, um, yes. tourism, workers, and neighborhood, yeah. two of those three have gone away. Yeah. Um, does that mean that revenue has um, taken a downturn or has the business from the neighborhood gone up to compensate? So it is B. Much to our surprise and our Great. delight, we have been blessed that the community has really stepped up. Um, the, and it's and it's kind of it's win win all the way around. So we've seen a year over year uh, growth in our gross revenue, um, and it is largely those people who live close to us within walking distance. Mm -hmm. um, we're seeing a lot of new faces, new faces we may not have seen otherwise, and that our marketing efforts prior to COVID nineteen hadn't reached. So it's been an extraordinary um, experience for us and the dedication of the community to support small business is quite remarkable. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you how many times a day people who are shopping in our market will say to me, thank you. Thank you for being here for us. Thank you and your team. Um, oh. Yeah, it's very touching. And I will tell you one of the, principles upon or reasons we wanted to create this community environment was so that people had a place to where they could convene and be welcome and be recognized. And we develop relationship with them mm -hmm. and we've never seen it m m grow more or be more pronounced than it is right now. That's amazing. And so what it sounds like is it's not even so much that first I, I love, and I appreciate that you said, Hey, we've, we've lost these two out of three of our um, client demographics that we typically get revenue from, but this other, the third arm really, really stepped up. And what I'm hearing is that it's not necessarily that it's probably a little bit of both that there was a need, there was a greater need mm -hmm. from those people, but it also sounds like they just doubled down in that. We want to support this small business. We want to support um, this neighborhood business that has this big variety of all the things that we like. And so we're going to be intentional about going and giving our business to this company. And I just, I love that because I've seen a huge push for people to support small business. And um, it's, it's been an amazing thing. That's been a real, real gift that's come out of this time. Is, um, it's magical. 
It's yeah. magical. It's really magical. I bet. And I even see it in our own um, in our own household. We'll think about getting dinner somewhere and we'll think, okay, where is a, a smaller business that we can go support? Where is just, exactly. just last night, I was thinking about a friend's restaurant in Wingfield Springs. And I thought, oh, I hope he's still getting a lot of business. Let's make sure that we go and purchase from right. him to make sure that his business keeps moving ahead. So I love that um, the community has really surrounded you. The neighborhood has really surrounded you and say, we're going to make sure that we elevate you. Um Talk to us about what that's like, because we've spe- we've spoke to a few other business owners that um, one was a uh, um, we were talking offline about uh, a client that we work with that is uh, in manufacturing and he is busier than ever. And he said, I feel conflicted. I'm busier than ever. Business is up. And he said, and I feel really bad about that because so many people are suffering. Is that something that you guys face um, in that your revenues are up and and lots of people's revenues aren't up? And if it is something you face, um, how do you handle that? Well, um, you know, a lot of a lot of people are suffering and a lot of businesses will not make it through this circumstance. And Mm -hmm. We're highly cognizant of that. Um, I feel we we feel very grateful and appreciative that we have a business that was allowed to stay open that provides these services that, and uh, that we could keep our employees employed. Um, we are because we carry over so many local brands. You know, yes, we're a small business, but we're a small business supporting over 50 other small businesses. Yeah, of course. So for our clientele, we are creating a way for them to double down when they come and shop with us and buy those local products. They have an opportunity to reach out and support all those all those other vendors all at one time. Mm. So, um, you know, it it is a time of humility Uh, a time of gratitude from our perspective, and it's a time to give back. So um, we're highly sensitive of the hardship of other people. So um, we're doing what we can for as a small business, you know, um, we donated 10 gift cards to an effort by the Reno Sparks Chamber of Commerce to Mm. our heroes. Um, We are, we have not, altered our pricing model at all. And our pricing model is very fair for a small store like us. We're a one-off. Um, we don't have the buying leverage of big box stores. So we're very fair in our price. And we, we have not altered that at all. We're always looking to help our customers save. Um, we have adjusted our loyalty program. We cut the point uh, threshold in half and are giving twice the discount um, and we, there's something else we've been doing. I can't even remember, uh, in terms of giving out and giving more. Oh, we donated to the, um, hospitality's effort to feed those people in the hospitality industry who mm. are out of work. So they're providing meals three times a week, uh, mm. out of Liberty. So Mark SD is spearheading that effort. Um, so, so it, it is, it is. Um, not a time to be broadcasting that, hey, look at us, we're surviving better than ever. Um, it's a time to be really humble, grateful, and do everything we can within our power to um, to maximize on that, right? So mm-hmm. if life hands you lemons, make lemonade, Yeah. regardless of the circumstances. I mean, we're still a small sure. business. We're still on the threshold of turning to profitability, but we're not there. So, um, what's interesting is you said life hands you lemonade, lemons, you make lemonade, but what I just heard is, and then when you have a little extra lemonade, then you give it to some others. Then you share the lemonade. You share the lemonade. <laughs> Price on your lemonade and give, you know, do a BOGO, you have one, get take one. So <laughs> yes, yes, that is exactly our philosophy. It always will be our philosophy. It was way before this ever happened. And, uh, we will continue with that for as long as we exist. Yeah, that's amazing. I love that. I love how much it doesn't surprise me, but I love hearing how much you're giving back to the community and to the people that are supporting us during this time. And uh, that's such a good point, Denise, is that by supporting your store, you're also supporting a variety, a number of other small businesses. So um, I do, yeah, there's a lot of people that you're. That um, only make one thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I can tell you uh, there, there are people I work with who make one chocolate. 
you know, mm -hmm. and that's all they do. So yeah. we use their product in our gift basket business and we sell it at the store. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's a huge difference for those people right now. Yeah. You know, yeah. You know, you were talking about the um, kind of switching gears a little bit. You're talking about the cleanliness of um, the store and, and, yeah. and upping it to another level. Um, one of our earlier Pivot Me Lives, we spoke with Armando. He's the president of Creative Works. And he said, one of the shifts you're going to see, and this was a few weeks back, um, and he was he was dead on. He said, uh, cleanliness becomes part of the show. Absolutely. And his, and his example was, you no longer go to a restaurant and just go, okay, no, no, don't bust the table. It's fine. I got three kids to sit down. He goes, you're going to go, no, 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 bust the table, do all the things. Like I want to witness cleanliness being part of the show. So are you guys, are you guys communicating that? I'm curious from like, from a day-to-day -day perspective, how you, um, do you communicate the things that you're doing to protect the people? And also how do you enforce things with inside the store. So, you know, you said, well, we, we don't let people congregate or we've, is it, is it removing tables and chairs so people can't sit down? I'm curious from a day-to-day -day perspective, how you enforce the ways that you're protecting people in the store. Really interesting that you choose the word enforce. Um, our experience has been that we have not had to enforce anything. Okay. We have posted signs and let people know that it's you cannot sit here and you know for the time being you cannot eat in the store you can't cook in the store you can't aggregate in the store you can't serve yourself we have had zero problems everyone has been wow. remarkably cooperative and respectful they understand i mean i've had a couple people who d just look past the signs Right. And so then you're up and you're you, you grab them and you're like, no, 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 no. You can't do that. We need to do that for you. See the sign. And yeah. then, oh, oh, OK, sorry. I said, look, you just can't right now. We can take care of it. Let us get it for you. And then it, 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 it's an engagement. Right. Mm -hmm. So now I have an opportunity to engage with that customer and find find out, hey, what, what's your favorite, you know, what brought you in? Have you been here before? Or how, how are things going for you? Uh, what can we do to help? So, but we really have not had to enforce anything. Oh, it, it's wonderful. been incredible. I really expected a lot of, a lot more aggravation that, than we would have. And as far as communicating that, you know, Cleanliness has always been a high standard for me personally. So it's just the way we operate. The, the one change we did make is we changed our uh, sanitation product so that it is a stronger sanitation product mm -hmm. that actually kills any latent coronavirus that might land on a counter or on a surface of any kind. So um, that just kind of ensures, are we communicating that? Not particularly. Um, we are absolutely relentless with our staff and they know what the standard is. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, it just really hasn't been a problem. Now we have not enforced within our staffing. We've, we make, we have masks available for them. Mm -hmm. We're in the, we're in the food business. So you're always wearing gloves, mm -hmm. but we let it, we allow it to be optional. Um, and if they choose not to, then I'm okay with that. As long as I see them constantly cleaning and washing their hands and everybody's hands are raw because we're just all washing our hands. Mm -hmm. And uh, so unless a mandate comes down that we absolutely, some people wear masks, some choose not to, some choose to wear gloves. And I'm okay with that because I know the cleanliness standards are being met or exceeded mm -hmm. and, uh, and I'm comfortable with that. Yeah. So what's, what are some of the challenges that you're facing right now? So we've, we've talked about a few of them, but um, what are the challenges that you faced? And um, if you've overcome them, how did you overcome those hurdles? Uh, any particular category of challenge? <laughs> There's so many, right? So we talked a little bit about cleanliness. Um, the biggest challenge is there's only 24 hours in a day and there's only one of me. That is a huge challenge. It is a challenge. Um, <laughs> uh, that's always been a challenge for me. I think it always will be. Um, challenges. Okay, so challenges are keeping up with the growth. So we are small 
a small crew. You know, I think we've got a total of 12 or 13 people on payroll. That hasn't changed. Um, so we're seeing this increase in the movement of inventory, right? So that means procurement has been raised. Sure. Um, and receiving, that's a burden on receiving and, and putting product away because, you know, I mean, we are fully stocked. We outside of hand sanitizer, Clorox wipes and paper towels. I mean, we've got everything else. So it's and we're sporadic on those items. So uh, but but the supply chain has remained open. We're fully stocked. We continue to add new products, right? So your volume increases, you're moving more products. So that's a challenge. Mm -hmm. um, there's the challenge of staffing. Um, we really would like to pick up some more people. And I think right now that with people's concerns, health concerns, it, coupled with the fact that um, this the federal compensation that's coming out, People, it's it's people are making more money staying at home. That's the bottom line. Mm -hmm. For for your staff, yeah, yeah. Okay. For my staff, we, we lost two people who, for for um, health reasons, felt that they were at risk. Mm -hmm. um, they're still on the payroll, and we anticipate that once things ease up, they may mm -hmm. want to come back to work, and their job is there, so that's not a problem. Sure. Uh, and that was their choice. Um, we have been stable with our staff the entire the, the entire period and they've been stellar they have just been superstars so we're eternally grateful for that but it's expanding and getting busier and needing more staff yeah so until the end of july when the uh unemployment dries up this short-term you know uh cares act relief for the individual a lot of people are just making more money staying at home. Mm -hmm. So that will be a challenge. Um, and I think right now, though, those are probably the two greatest challenges that we face. Sure. We're just keeping up with the pace of growth and, and finding the right people to help us take that next step. And I would imagine one of the things that we've heard is that um, bringing on new people in this time can be challenging as well. So for people who business is continuing as usual, or even they've had an uptick, they're struggling with staffing. They're struggling with interviewing and finding people in this season. Um, yeah. Have you guys put out, so are you currently looking for more staff right now? We are. And we did are. you, and yeah. are you finding that people Fairly are responding? Using uh, Indeed. Mm -hmm. And um, it's been a, uh, a lot of the folks that we've found have been through Indeed. Okay. We have been through word of mouth, right? So referrals from either our neighbors or uh, current staff. And then um, we also use Handshake, which is the oh. employment link with UNR because we hire a lot of college students. So um, it's great for the kids and uh, it's a great learning experience. You know, we've been around this kind of a business for over 20 years. So um, hiring is always a major, staffing is always a major challenge in, in our yeah. business. Always, always. And you just learn to adapt to it and talk about pivoting. <laughs> right. <laughs> You're constantly pivoting day to day. I mean, it's just crazy. So um, we've, 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 uh, We'll, we'll manage this too, you know. Yeah. Uh, one of the benefits of growing is that we're able to invest in people more. So um, is to pay them a, a higher wage. And I mean, our goal, our goal would be to get everybody up to $15 an hour minimum and, uh, and then have an, uh, a bonus program, right? So it's kind of like revenue sharing. So- mm -hmm profitability. We've done that before. It's a really successful program and we'll do it again. Yeah. Yeah. But on top of that, you know, you start exploring options where you can offer benefits, paid vacation or healthcare benefits or things like that. So those are the things we're looking to do as we continue to grow and mature. Sure. Um, I'm trying to think if there are any other real big challenges getting this doggone deli up and running is been a challenge. Um, but it's okay because, you know, about last fall we picked up um, a local gift basket business. So we're now in the, in the gourmet gift basket business and um, 
that, uh, again, time management with that. And, but we've mm -hmm. got a good staff there as well. Fabulous, fabulous people. And, uh, in this time, you know, where there's none of that face-to-face -face contact, people still want the ones they love and care about to know that they're thinking of them and they want to reach out. So gift baskets becomes a hot item, right? I would imagine, yeah. And everybody's at home with a lot of time on their hands. So they're shop online shopping like it's nobody's business. It's true. So <laughs> That's a business that's up for sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you know, accelerating that. And again, there's only 24 hours in a day and only in only one of me. So it's really hard to pull everything together, but it's happening. I'm, I'm pretty confident the deli will be ready to open this month. Sure. Sure. So let's yeah. talk about the, let's talk about opportunities. So we touched on a few of them, but what yeah. opportunities are you seeing? And we, we started to discuss this before we came on live is that um, we talk a lot about struggles. You know, there's a lot of uh, information out there through media and social media and all the places about the struggles that people are going through. But let's talk about the opportunities that exist. Um, one of the um, previous Pivot Me Lives we had with um, Dana Doswell, and she was uh, one of her main pieces of advice is while everyone else is, is our, while everyone else is contracting, this is the time to push ahead. It is. Um, and it sounds it is. like you guys have pushed ahead and that will serve you. So let's talk about the opportunities that exist and the ways that you are pushing ahead. Sure. So um, one of the things we did prior, pre-COVID, because we knew it was going to be necessary, with the advent of the gift basket business, we needed a way to display so I contracted a local company, House of Reed, to build me custom floor to ceiling shelving. So I have doubled my shelving space by going vertical, right? Mm -hmm. um, and we continue to maximize our space. So we, you know, this, this, deli, this deli is going to be 120 square feet but it's going to be massive production out of this small space. Right. Mm -hmm. So those were things that were in the works that I think would have made sense regardless. Um, I think the addition of providing delivery and catering mm -hmm. that makes, you know, that creates another revenue stream. And so that's advantageous because people, one thing this whole situation has created, um, online shopping and delivery was gaining momentum in, in a significant way. But because of this COVID-19 experience, it has exploded. Yeah. And it, it has created a paradigm shift where this must be part of your business plan. You must create e-commerce with a delivery last. And this was in my business plan five years ago um, to create an omni-channel delivery mechanism, right? It's last mile delivery. And because everyone is sequestered and they still have needs and demands and wants, if you don't fulfill that as a business owner, as a business model, you're out of the loop. Mm -hmm. You're out of the loop. Now, there's a certain percentage of the population that's going to want that brick and mortar face to face experience, right? Mm -hmm. like cheers. Norm, you know, welcome. Here we are. They want to see you. They want to talk to you. There's a certain amount of the demographic that is probably never going to want that again or very limited exposure to that. Um, so I think that last mile uh, delivery is become so apparent, right? So if you translate that into the commercial real estate world, industrial, the industrial sector is exploding, right? Warehousing mm -hmm. uh, and, and distribution because th these businesses need to be close to the destination. That's mm -hmm. last mile delivery. So, so that will become a really significant part of our game plan. And the other piece is we are um, investigating, we're going to um, change out our POS system. We need a more robust, sophisticated POS system. I think you probably remember me talking about that yeah. a couple of years ago. I do. And uh, so the time has come. And also we are going to, um, we're going into development on a full-fledged uh, e-commerce website. 
So once all those puzzle pieces are, are in place, which should be um, probably Q3 this year, mm-hmm. we should be, if not sooner, um, the next the next opportunity becomes to expand. Yeah. Um, and, and I think that what we're doing is the right thing at the right time for a lot of different environments. There's a lot of construction and development in just our area, but there are in, in lots of areas across the country. So if we chose to go that big, I think we have a great model that could, could take that leap. Mm-hmm. I'll, 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 we'll get there when we get there, yeah. but, uh, you know, we're looking at some other developments here around town mm-hmm. where we could take our concept yeah. and it would be a really good fit. And do so, it there. You yeah. know, a lot of the, a lot of the people that we've talked to, um, on the pivot me lives have said, we've revisited our POS system, our, you know, our CRM, we're finally going to learn our CRM. We're going to learn our inventory management, all, all the things that we knew we needed to address this is the time to go. Okay, let's build up. Yeah, let's build our bedrock. Let's tighten it up, make it a little bit stronger of a foundation because we're we're pushing ahead. But this is the time we need to look at our systems and go. All right. Well, what do we need to change? What what if we've what have we known we needed to tackle? And it's finally time too. So I love when you mentioned the POS system because that's come up that's come up a few times. Well, um, you know, um, to that point, uh, Bentley Ranch meets. I mean, Bentley Ranch, Bentley, Bentley Industries, huge corporation, right? Worldwide, renowned. Um, these guys, are, they're a foundation in our community in Northern Nevada. They elected to shut down completely um, when once the the COVID, once the restrictions initiated, they got wiped out of their supply, and they only processed so many animals at a time. And mm-hmm. they decided to shut down entirely and build their own processing facility so that they could be in charge of their destiny, right? Mm-hmm. So now they don't have any processing restrictions. They can they can expand and shrink whenever they choose. Mm-hmm. And so, yes, it's a time of opportunity. Um, and it, it's a time to hit the reset button, mm-hmm. to reflect on what's working, what wasn't working, and then restructure so that you can be ready. Because once the floodgates open, my my personal opinion, once the floodgates open, it's we are going to recover very quickly. I think yeah. the economy is going to recover very quickly. So during this time, um, we talked about this a little bit before. Um, you know, it's a time of uncertainty for many people. How are you? Are you intentional about how you're showing up right now for your team? How you're leading your team? Are you? Um, some people have given feedback that my team needed a little bit more from me. Maybe they had more questions, or I made sure that I asked them how they were doing, and instead of just "Hey, how are you?" more specific, "How's your family? How are you coping with this time?" So, talk to us about how you're showing up right now as a leader, and has that changed? Um, I would say I'm a little more hypersensitive uh, about our staff and their needs. Um, we are going to bonus everybody uh, actually today in this payroll period um, as a as an added thank you to mm. say you know what we appreciate that you're showing up when you, when you could have you have an excuse not to and a legitimate excuse not to mm-hmm. um, and and for for doing such a great job that kind of thing um, we are so present in our business on a day to day basis. Um, and it's completely open door policy. Mm. So our communication level's always been very high with the staff and that will continue. I don't see that. It's not a big change for us. You know, we're not like a, an, a, a white collar office environment where you may or may not see your coworkers and interface with them. And um, it's a very, ours is a very hands-on business. It requires that leadership on a day-to-day basis because it can go sideways really fast, really yeah. fast. Um, so it's, uh, out, we're out in the community, you know, and we are actually, a lot of our clientele and our friends will come and see us because they can, right? Mm-hmm. Because we're open. They can sure. come in and they can chat and they can vent and they can, we can laugh and we can whatever. Um, so it's a kind of a source of relief as well. Yeah. I think sometimes I see it, I see it in our guests. 
Like, oh my God, here's a place that's kind of normal, yeah. right? This reminds me of what it was before. And there's relief in that for people, you know? Yeah. So same thing with our staff. Think we are on them all the time, you know, just chatting and how's this going and what about that? And, you know, so that hasn't really changed a whole lot for us. Okay. Okay. Is, has there been, has there been resources that you guys have used in times like this, whether it's specific resources or, you know, we, we talk a lot about the, in the show about the yes, no list, things that you're saying yes to and things that you're saying no to. So is there any resources that have really helped you during this period? And has there been anything that you're, you've said, we got to say yes to this, this is going to serve us right now. Um, you know, I did take advantage of uh, some of the economic relief that came down through the CARES Act. Mm -hmm. um, that's just getting in place right now. I mean, sure. actually, literally today. Was it the um, the PPP or the... Um, yeah. yeah, we did not go after the EDIL. Um, we did not feel that that was necessary. Um, and then, you know, we have an outstanding SBA loan and there's been some additional relief there. So, yes, I did take advantage of that because I think uh, as a business owner, I would have been crazy not to. Yeah. Um, and our model, our size is the right business to benefit from that. So that allows us to keep, keep our staff happy, you know, keep the shelves stocked. Going back to challenges, that was the other challenge is, you know, you're always a little bit behind the curve when you're mm -hmm. growing, right? So you need to have inventory in order to sell, in order to grow sales, but you got to have the money to buy the inventory, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So uh, that is a challenge. So sure. you're always chasing that extra dollar so you can have that extra inventory. Yeah. That's a challenge. And lines have changed. One of the clients that we work with has a million dollar line for procurement. And unbeknownst to him, he was told, I think four or five days later, the line just got frozen. It's frozen. He had no idea. He had access it to, to it. Yeah. 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 That was We're, a surprise. You know, outside of our SBA loan, we sell fund. Mm -hmm. We own all our inventory. So we're carrying probably between our basket center and our store, hundred thousand dollars of, of perishables. Wow. Okay. So <laughs> take a deep breath. Uh, Denise. <laughs> so when you're curating, when I'm, when I'm curating what comes on the shelf, I mean, it, you talk about intention. Yeah. Smoke. You You've know, got a lot of dogs I've in that fight. Yeah. You know, and I've got virtually less than eight months to turn that inventory or I'm eating it. Yeah. So, um, yes, we're very intentional about that. Um, what was the original question? Because there's more to that. So the favorite. resources and things that you're saying yes to. Ah, okay. So um, we reached, recently decided that in order to reach a larger local audience, we joined the Reno Chambers, Spar uh, the Reno Sparks Chamber of Commerce. We felt that that was the timing was right, and um, we want to appeal more to our local audience. So um, we're participating. We are also members of the uh, the Riverwalk Merchants Association. So we're participating there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just kind of the the local organizations that are really part of that. Take care of your own uh, mentality. Um, and so we say yes to those things a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, for a small company, I think we we do. A fair, a fairly decent job of giving when we can give. Mm -hmm. um, what we are saying uh, yes to uh, is moving forward with some changes within the store to make us more appealing to a broader audience, mm -hmm. uh, to continue to stay relevant from a product perspective, and uh, and to show that we are trend. You know, we're we're part of the trend baking. We're not followers. We're leaders. <laughs> Yeah, so I think people really like that. They mm -hmm. like to come in and say, "Wow, I love, I like seeing what's new. It's fun. Mm -hmm. it's fun. Yeah, it's fun for me." Um, you brought up a good point: reevaluating the products that you have because your demographic has changed. And yeah. so, if it was totally tailored to tourism or to workers that only have fifty minutes to pop in and pop out, now you're getting neighborhood people that actually. Yeah come for some camaraderie, I would imagine you might have to switch up your product portfolio a bit. Even more. We're seeing it more and more. So um, to, to that point, 
a great uh, example is prior to the shutdown, you know, a lot of the Tesla Panasonic employees were residing downtown. Mm-hmm. So we had a very large Asian demographic and mm-hmm. we came to that demographic. And we've probably seen that business drop off 80%. Wow. So while we're still carrying those products, we're ha- we're, there's there's going to be a shift until we know they, they come back online. Mm-hmm. We're, we're having to shift in, in that area with the product offering because not as many locals are into, you know, fried breaded octopus balls. <laughs> Not as much of a hit in local Reno. Hey, but, you know, we have some very unusual products in our product mix, and that's one of them. So, um, yeah, you have to, in the food industry, if you are not on top of what is changing and what the client wants, you can be left behind so quickly. So Mm -hmm. quickly. And if you miscalculate and you tie up a lot of inventory, Mm -hmm. that's going to, that's going to waste. That's like burning money. That's a, that's such so, a good point. That's such a good highlight from this show is reevaluate if your client demographic has has changed. So in your instance, it has completely changed. Um, and so be aware, did your clients change, your entire demographic change? And yeah. how has your clients' needs, even the existing ones that you, you were already servicing, how has their needs changed? Because maybe you've got the same Steve that always came in three days a week and you see Steve again, except Steve used to work at the courthouse and it's closed. No, he doesn't. Yeah. So he like, has one third of the money to spend. Yeah. So what does Steve spend his money on? Mm. You know, and, and you Apparently hear not fried octopus balls. <laughs> <laughs> hey, they're frozen. So, you know, you can eat them a little at a time um, and they're not that bad. I've tried them. Yeah. Uh, it, uh, so um, yeah, it's being highly sensitive to that. Right. Yeah. So a lot of times, um, one of the things we pride ourselves on in our product mix is being able to cater to that person who wants a $3 loaf of bread, that person who wants a $5 loaf of bread and that person who'll pay $9 for a loaf of bread. Mm -hmm. And so it's not all about, you know, I think a lot of times when people come into our store, we look really sexy. So people think, Oh, it's too expensive for me until Mm -hmm. they start price shopping us. And I have had many people say, um, wow, your prices are really good. And, I, and I'm like, wow, greatest, greatest compliment ever, right? Mm-hmm. Because I work really hard at that. Mm-hmm. I work really hard at that because not everybody has the same level of disposable income. And moving forward, it's going to be even more pronounced. So we have to be even more sensitive to it and find those products that satisfy that need. Is, right. is that one of the predictions that you see, Denise? I mean, nobody really has a crystal ball, but but when you think about how your product portfolio might shift, do you feel like you might need to tend uh, adjust a little bit more to sure. lower priced items? Absolutely. Absolutely. Hence the reason for more shelf space, right? Mm-hmm. I only have, I can't increase the size of my, my suite and I really don't want to because I don't want my rent to go up. <laughs> um, but what I can do is maximize the space that I have and do everything I can to provide that range of products uh, within that space so that somebody who has limited funds can still shop and get their needs met and feel good about it and know that they're getting quality choices. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and, 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 and have the desire to come back because they're welcome and they're appreciated. I mean, you know, we, we, uh, we provide EBT, uh, snap transactions. Mm -hmm. Why not? Those folks have needs, right? So it's about your, it's about decency and appreciation and providing a service, Mm -hmm. right. And, 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 and doing everything you can within your power to make that service available to as many people as you can. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. So we talked about um oh, oh you asked me one more thing. Uh-huh. Say you said what are you saying no to? That was my next question. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> right now, um I think that I am say- we're we're de- we're definitely saying no to expansion. Mm-hmm. Haven't 
absolutely um, fine tuned everything within our con- th- what we what I like to call is our concept store, right? Our lo- our current location. Mm-hmm. So um, we've been approached by every developer in town who's putting in a mixed use residential retail project. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they're beautiful, pretty much every last one of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we'd love to expand, but um, it's just not the right time for us. Yeah. And the worst thing we could do is pull that trigger and fail. Um, because, you know, building the brand is, it's got to be a complete process before you, be, in my opinion, before you take that next step. So that's yeah. the, the biggest thing we're saying no to. Yeah, it's got to be a strategic process. And there is, there is a thing called, um, you know, there is such a thing as, um, as growing too fast. Um, There is such a thing as too much of a good thing. Um, And it's hard, because when we're building businesses, we just think growth, growth, growth. Um, What was the, um, it's Keith Cuttingham, I love his books, a great author, great speaker. And I think I'm going to paraphrase, but he said more small businesses die from indigestion than starvation. Okay. And I, I love, that. right? I it, that. It's a good point. And so we got to, we got to stop and go, okay, it's not about eating more, 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 more. It's not about growing as fast as we can at all cost. It's got to be strategic. Don't get me wrong. I'm a huge fan of execution. Our, our team's kind of um buzzword that we throw around a lot is uh, we practice violent execution. Um, <laughs> and, and we do, we do. However, it's got to be strategic. Absolutely. Um, and I love that you're you're pausing and say there's a lot of opportunities in front of us. There's a lot of directions that we can go, but oftentimes our success is hinged upon the narrowness of our focus, right? So right. let's do this thing really, really well and build that strong foundation, have that bedrock, and then then we can grow. Growth is in our future, but it's got to be strategic. Correct. Um, it's a great share. We've identified, uh, you know, locations that will be best suited to us um, should we decide to to take that next step. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I, I'm, I'm not, uh, worried about the opportunity mm-hmm. at all, but the timing, the timing is of great concern to me. So, and it's difficult for me cause I'm, a, I don't like maintaining. I like creating and building. I know this about um, you, Denise. <laughs> <laughs> builders, uh, doing the same thing every day is really frustrating. Mm-hmm. And, um, so that I have to harness that, that and yeah. keep it focused on the day to day and really streamline the day to day to ensure stability in brand and, you know, in, with the client, with the staff, with the clientele, with, with just everything that goes into it. It's such a, um, there's so many moving parts in the business that I have chosen to create. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I love that you said chosen to create, because it reminds you that you're that, that, that it was a choice, you know, it it re- choice. It reta- you retain the power. So we don't just feel like we're on this, uh, we're on this carnival ride and we didn't choose it. No, no, no. If <laughs> as entrepreneurs, we chose this ride choice for good, bad or indifferent. <laughs> That's so choice. true. Yeah. So most of the, most of our listeners are either business owners themselves or business leaders. Um, for those that are listening, um, both live and, and on the, on the website after me at, um, real quick, um, we'll be posting these obviously at uh, pivot me.com backslash, I believe it's interviews. We'll drop the link in the show notes, but, um, by all means you can see both the, um, the, um, full video and then we'll have excerpts from it as well. But for those that are listening, Denise, what piece of advice do you have, words of encouragement, uh, would you share with them? Well, I would say don't be shy about going after every resource that's available to you. Mm-hmm. Um, and that could be anything, right? It could be the it could be the CARES Act. It could be your local. Pay. It doesn't matter. Do what you have to do. Go after. Ask. Swallow your pride. Be courageous. And, and be tenacious. I mean, every small business owner had a, has a dream or had a dream, started out with a dream. And that dream only dies if they let it die. Mm. So people, if, and, and when it gets hard, that is when the tough get going. And yeah, <laughs> and you just have to dig in your heels, suck it up, be tough, be tenacious, be determined. Do what it takes with integrity um, to get where you want to go. And, and resources will present themselves. Doesn't mean it's going to be easy, 
we've had some really scary times uh, in the last two and a half years that we've been operating. Really scary times um, where we could have thrown the towel in for sure. Mm -hmm. And you just dig in. I pray a lot. Uh, so I'm a little bit, uh, spiritual that way. I'm a lot spiritual that way. I'm not going to lie. Um, but I, we are tenacious about making this happen. And I, I can't tell you how many 18 hour days in a row I've put in to make sure the things that need to get done, get done. Right. So there's resources out there, go after them. Don't, don't take no for an answer. No, it's just the next, the next guy is going to be behind you, behind that no, that might say yes. Mm -hmm. Ask a thousand times if you have to go find it. It's out there. Mm. Denise, I love it. Carry your dream. Don't ever let anybody say you can't and hold on to your dream. Yeah. Yeah. It's such a good reminder right now because there are people that are going, maybe this wasn't the time. Maybe this was a sign. No, 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 no. This is, there's no signs. It's just you showing up and consistently executing. And yeah. some days are harder than others, but the hard days aren't necessarily an indication that you're in the wrong place or you're in the wrong market. I mean, we've got to, we've got to evaluate. We've got to have honest conversations with ourselves and our staff and our partners, but ultimately, um, will be rewarded for pushing ahead in this season, for for showing up, for supporting our clients, for supporting our staff. Um, we, that will serve us well. Again, what what Dana had said is there are lots of people who are contracting, lots of people that are that are sitting and waiting. Um, and this is the opportunity for for us to advance. This is the opportunity to say, well, do I need to change up my product portfolio? Do I need to change up um, what I'm doing? And be very cognizant of the customer experience. So much of what you talked about, Denise, was creating this really amazing and unique customer experience in downtown Reno. Um, and I love that you talked about that because. Um, that's something we've really got to double down on. One of um, we really one, do. Yeah, a, it is a ghost town downtown right now. Yeah, We're like yeah. a little oasis in the middle of a ghost town. It's it's in really good way putting it. You know, the other thing you just reminded me of too is, um, you know, typically people contract when they're afraid, mm. and I would suggest to people not to be afraid right now. You know, be concerned, be aware. And educate yourself. Um, but operating from a place of fear will cause you to contract. Yeah. And whether you think it, feel it, act on it, it's going to impact everything and everyone you touch. So we we are emboldening um, our business, our staff, our minds, our hearts to to expand right now. Mm. You know, um, courageous, great from a place of, of fear. Yeah, that's a good point. When you're afraid and when you're tired, you tend to make poor decisions. Yes. So be very aware when you're in either one of those states. And yep. that's not the time to be reevaluating your life or your business. Or making those big decisions. Right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, Denise, I love how, how you've shown up in the community in this time, how you've Thanks. supported it. Um, how you've responded to, hey, our client demographic has changed. How do we address their unique needs? How do we bring in products to support them? How do we show up and provide even better customer service? Uh, you guys are well known for your customer service, but you've doubled down on it and said, hey, we're going to we're gonna take this even one step farther. How do we do that? Um, now, you've given us some great insight. How do we support you during this time? How do we show up for you and for your business? Well, um, you know, it's always nice to make new friends. That's how I uh, like to refer to it when people come and visit us. We yeah. see, we're seeing a lot of first time faces um, and we're very gracious and welcoming, whether they make a purchase or not. Right. Mm -hmm. It's about community and it's about a place where you're welcome and you matter more than your wallet does. Mm -hmm. um, first and foremost. Secondly, hey, yeah, it helps if you can buy something. Yay! <laughs> uh, join our loyalty program. You know, we've yeah. got great discounts going on right now. Um, come and say hi. Uh, like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, those kinds of normal crazy things. Mm -hmm. um, tell your friends about us. If you come in and you like what you see and you have a great experience, um, tell your friends. Yeah, um, We'd love to make more friends, you Absolutely. know, touch more 
people in our community. Um, we do have the gift basket business and uh, we are doing free delivery right now to help people save some money and still be able to reach out to those that they care and love. So if you want to say hi to mom um, and how, and uh, treat her to something lovely without, you know, compromising space, it's a great way to do it. Um, but first and foremost, know that we're there. We're there for the community and uh, come say hi. Come yeah. and check out. We're not for everybody, yeah. but uh, we, our friendship is. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. And Denise, I just got to point out something. Just even in your language, you said, um, you know, we want people to come and visit us, which is very, and I, I point this out because language really matters. You didn't say people to come shop with us. You said visit us. You said friends. I mean, that's just so important. You can tell the kind of environment, the kind of business that you've created, which is what I've experienced every time I walk into your 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 location oh, yeah. as well. Yeah, that's it's good. it's true. I'm a fan, but uh, that's important. The language that you're using is so so important, and I know that you will be rewarded um, for the way that you show up for for your staff and for your clients in this time. Thank you so Thank much for joining you. us. What, by the way, website URL. So we'll drop it in show notes, but can you share okay. your website? So real quick? Don't judge. Don't judge. Um, my website has generally been a place card since we opened. Uh, it's www.umreno. That's U M R E N O.com. Really easy. Uh, we, uh, we are going to, we are in, in development to launch a brand new website and it will be a fully operational e-commerce. We'll start out with deli and gift baskets online and then we'll eventually evolve into a, our full grocery line. Hence why we are also looking to upgrade our POS system because we, we need to be able to operate on that scale. Mm -hmm. um, and then on Instagram, we are hashtag the urban market Reno. So those Wonderful. are two best places to find us outside of coming through the door and saying hi. Do both. Do both. For the listeners, for the listeners, especially people that are in Reno, Nevada, definitely do both. So yeah. thank you, Denise. Thank you so much for, um, we know you're, you're busy. There's a lot of things going on. So thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us. Thanks for making me part of your day. Woohoo! All right. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks, April. Thank you.